Hey guys, my name is Kaylin, and I work for the Papio Missouri River Natural Resources District. An important part of our job at the Papio Missouri River NRD is to protect, manage, and enhance our state's natural resources. Water, especially, is a big part of what we do at the NRD every day. Nebraska has some of the best water resources in the United States. Today we are going to explore groundwater. Before we dive in, let's talk a bit about what makes this all possible. It's important to remember the cycle water goes through. Check out this animation. You can see how water begins to evaporate from the Earth's surface, rises into the atmosphere, condenses into clouds, and falls again to the Earth's surface in the form of precipitation. Notice how the precipitation causes runoff from higher points to lower points, while some water soaks into the ground. The water we see today has been cycling around and through the Earth for billions of years. Alright, let's get to groundwater. What is groundwater? Groundwater is water that moves through soil and rocks below the Earth's surface. Since it's below the Earth's surface, groundwater isn't visible, like lakes, rivers, or oceans. But how does water get down below the surface? Groundwater comes from rain, snow, sleet, and other forms of precipitation. Once that precipitation hits the earth, it can soak into the ground through cracks or tiny pores in the soil. The water travels down into the ground until it reaches a depth where the soil is completely soaked, or what is called saturated. This level is called the water table. Anything below that line will have soil that's completely saturated. Imagine you're digging a hole. You grab your shovel and get to work. After digging into the soil for what seems like forever, you notice you've reached a point where the ground is completely soaked and a small puddle of water is forming. You just dug into the water table. These pockets of water that exist beneath the water table are called aquifers. All right, picture an aquifer. Are you imagining a large underground lake, bats flying around with stalactites and stalagmites? Though that would be a really cool lair for Batman to hide out, aquifers are not underground rivers or lakes. Instead, aquifers are made up of soil and rock structures that allow for water to collect and move. In order for water to infiltrate, it's important that these rocks are porous and permeable, meaning they have very small cracks and cavities for water to collect and move through. The more porous and the more permeable the ground is, the more water can be stored and the quicker it can move through the ground. Groundwater does in fact move underground, but very slowly, sometimes as slow as 12 inches per year. Did you know underneath most of central and western Nebraska, as well as seven other states, is one of the largest aquifers on Earth? It is called the High Plains Aquifer, and oftentimes called the Ogallala Aquifer within the state. Nebraska is very fortunate to have this groundwater resource. We have so much groundwater in the state that if all of the groundwater was pumped out of our Nebraska aquifers, we could fill up a Nebraska-sized swimming pool with 40 feet of water. That's a lot of water, and deeper than many of our lakes. With all of that water underground, do you know how we are able to access and use it? Well, do you? Of course, through a well. Wells extend into aquifers and pump groundwater for several different purposes. Thanks to cartoons and movies, you might be imagining a well made out of stone with a bucket that lowers into the well to fetch a pail of water. However, in today's world, most wells are much more high-tech. They include pumps that pull the water from the ground, below the water table, and pump it for different uses. Do you know how we use groundwater? Excellent! If you live in the western two-thirds of Nebraska, you likely use groundwater for just about everything, like drinking water and household use, showering, laundry. But did you know the largest use for groundwater is irrigation? Irrigation is how a lot of farmers water their crops and produce the food we eat. It's especially important in areas that don't get enough rainfall to support plants' thirst for water. Perhaps if you've ever flown in a plane, you've looked out the window to what looks like giant green circles dotting the landscape. Those areas are all being irrigated from a center pivot irrigation system, ensuring the plants are well watered. 
Other uses for groundwater include industries, mining, and even for livestock to drink. While it does seem like there is a lot of water in the aquifer, many scientists and natural resource professionals are working to ensure this resource will be here for generations to come. It's estimated that the United States uses 82.3 billion gallons of groundwater per day. In many states, including small parts of Nebraska, water levels within the aquifer have declined by more than 10 to 150 feet. This means we are using this renewable resource faster than it's being naturally replenished. Do you know how groundwater is replenished? That's right, like we talked about earlier, forms of precipitation like rain become groundwater. Hydrologists estimate that only about 12% of the precipitation we get actually becomes groundwater. The rest either evaporates, is sucked up by plants, or becomes runoff that feeds our surface water. Hydrologists have determined that the Ogallala Aquifer is only being replenished at a rate of less than one inch per year, and scientists believe if the aquifer were completely depleted, it could take up to 6,000 years to refill naturally. That's a really long time. Organizations like the Papio Missouri River NRD and the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources work to protect groundwater from overuse so that water remains for years to come, but also to protect this valuable resource from pollutants. What types of things do you think might contaminate groundwater? There are numerous issues that can negatively affect our groundwater. Things like pesticides, fertilizers, road salts, motor oil, leaky septic systems, and even landfills with cracked protective layers can cause our ground and surface water to become polluted. Remember, groundwater provides drinking and household water to almost 85% of the state. Imagine if that was contaminated. Polluted water can be bad for your health, sometimes causing serious illness. This is why professionals in the field monitor water quality closely, as well as work to educate the public of the dangers of polluted water and minimize the amount of contaminants as best as possible. Thanks for joining us as we discovered more about groundwater. For more information about the Papio Missouri River NRD or your local groundwater resources, you can find us on all the social media platforms or by checking out our website at www.papionrd.org.